What's up friends, Becca Scott here from Good Time Society and today we're taking a look at the Dawn Shade Prototype from Highborn Games. <laughs> In Dawnshade, players take on the role of Petarukans, small forest creatures with potassiums that allow them to glide. A potassium is the thin flap of skin between your wrist and your waist, like this. Anyway, these little forest critters journey around the land of Dawnshade, leaving their village in the Galeswood Forest to pursue the prophecy of the mysterious godlike watchers and their potential return. Today we're exploring the components and concepts for Dawnshade, as this is their prototype for the Kickstarter. There's a link to check it out in the description below. Once the game is fully released, we'll do a more specific how to play with a deep dive into the rules. Dawnshade is played over three games known as a trilogy. In this mode, players quest through a consecutive campaign over three chapters. Each chapter is a separate game session. Dawnshade also features a massive logbook, which contains choose-your-own-adventure type entries, ensuring many hundreds of different possible story branches. As the Petrukin party, known as Kinship, ventures around Dawnshade, completing quests, battling enemy factions, finding treasures, and playing bar games, they'll increase their powers and prowess in an attempt to prepare for the major threat at the end of the game. Dawnshade features a boatload of components, including character mats, four of which are featured in the base game. These mats include stat dials for the core attributes, agility, attack, item capacity, hit points, defense, and devotion. There's also spaces for elemental magic, skill dice, and an overload tracker. More on what those mean in a second. The Vaki Mat, where players track their kinship's level, experience points, threat, and training points. As players quest around Dawnshade, they'll gain experience to level up and earn training points which can be spent to buy new skills or augment their attributes. Additionally, each of the six Watchers provide a specific Vaki related to their deity. Vaki is the elemental magic which powers everything in Dawnshade. These elements are divided into two tiers. Tier 1, Sun, Mountain, and Water. Tier 2, Fire, Air, and Nature. Characters also receive a set of ability cards, which have an associated Vaki cost and require a combination of skill dice to perform. These skill dice can be purchased with those training points. The Quest Mat. It presents a map of the kinship's movement as they journey around Dawnshade. Players will start with the village on a hex of their choosing, and during the game will draw quest tiles from the quest deck, placing them on the quest mat. Characters can only move along pathways, and some placements might result in dead ends. However, each space of movement throughout the game raises the threat level. If the threat level reaches a threshold marked by the difficulty, the game's major event takes place, whether the characters are prepared or not. Threat ratings can be set at the beginning of the game, depending on how difficult of a challenge the party wishes to encounter. For an easy threat, 19. Normal is 16, and hard is 13. The battle mat is where people battle. When a battle occurs, players will add a stack of chips known as a battle stack to the board. These stacks represent a number of stats, including hit points, shields, special conditions, and more. When battling, players and their foes will roll dice to remove chips from opposing stacks. When a stack is depleted of chips, that combatant is considered KO'd. If all players on a side are KO'd, they lose the battle. More on battle in a bit. Each game begins with the kinship at the starting village. After setting up the game and before taking the first turn, read the Chapter 1 Starting Village narrative in the logbook for the first game in the campaign. For the second game in the campaign, you may choose to read one of the chapter 2 through 5 narratives. For the third and final game in the campaign, read the chapter 6 narrative. Gameplay occurs in turns, beginning with the active player. They move the kinship to a new quest tile drawn from the top of the quest deck, or to a previously revealed outpost. They cannot stay in their current position or return to other non-outpost quest tiles. But 
their movement must be strategic because each space moved increases the threat level by one point. If a new quest tile is drawn, it must be placed next to an already placed quest tile in any alignment. After moving and increasing their threat, the players complete the action on that space and earn rewards according to the entry in the logbook. Play continues with the next player clockwise until the major threat quest tile appears. Let's look at a sampling of some of the tiles and their activities. When the Kinship visits the Watcher's Temple, they have the ability to gain a benefit based on whichever Watcher they are aligned with. Each Watcher's alignment track is located below their icon. Because we are most aligned with Bracia, we will take the Airborne token, which looks like this. We'll keep it on its positive side, and it will give us a chance to evade by rolling dice later in the game. In this example, we are considered balanced because we are along the same amount on the path for each of the Watchers. If this is the case, then add one token representing each of the Watchers to the bag. Then players will each draw one token out of the bag and may use its positive ability later in the game. If your alignment for two or more Watchers but not all is the same, then you are considered unaligned. This means you add one token for each watcher into the bag, but this time you use the negative side of the token. When the kinship moves to an event quest tile, they look up the corresponding narrative in the logbook. Players encounter outpost tiles where they can engage in various activities to help prepare them for the major threat at the end of the game. These include training at the guild hall, gambling at the tavern, shopping at the mercantile, transmuting Vaki at the Foundry, and even launching Cogbots at targets for prizes at the Boomshot Gallery. There are three potential types of events, Stat Challenges, Cogbot Challenges, and Treasure or Trap Challenges. After reading the corresponding event in the logbook, the Kinship will choose which branching path to take. Each path leads to different skill-based challenges to determine whether they succeed or fail on their chosen path. These challenges range from rolling dice into modifier zones, spinning, flipping, and rolling cogbot chips, and various other activities that will test the kinship in fun and challenging ways. For stat challenges, players will roll dice corresponding to what's listed in the logbook entry. The pips, as well as the area in which the dice land on the battle mat, affect the player's overall total. Add up the pips on the dice, as well as any bonuses on the mat. Then, if the player's combined total exceeds the threshold written in the logbook, they succeed. If they don't, they fail. Read the success or failure entry based on your group's outcome. The major threat quest tile is placed at the bottom of the quest deck and represents one of the major threats endangering the fragile balance of Dawnshade. A major threat can be encountered naturally by reaching the last tile in the quest deck. It can also be triggered earlier by reaching the maximum threat players set at the beginning of the game based on their chosen difficulty level. Once the threat meter reaches its max threshold, all gameplay immediately stops and the major threat quest tile is retrieved from the bottom of the quest deck and placed onto the quest mat. The major threat encounter begins immediately. They operate just like battles, except harder, scarier, and more epic. Each major threat has an entry corresponding with the player levels in the logbook. Once the kinship has completed the major threat, the chapter is concluded and the game session is over. Depending on the outcome of their adventure, players can read the major threat victory or defeat narrative and earn the rewards listed in the logbook. At the end of the third game, after completing the major threat of Chapter 6, the campaign is concluded. The final version of Dawnshade will feature legacy items for players to earn throughout their playthroughs. Each of these artifacts provide a powerful property bestowed upon the players by the Watchers themselves. And that's Dawnshade. If you enjoyed this video, you can head on over to the Dawnshade Kickstarter by following the link in the description below. And if you're watching this after the Kickstarter has ended, well, why don't you go and pick yourself up a copy of Dawnshade? That's it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. I love you.